Now we move on to arrays. As we mentioned before, they come in two flavors, local and global. Global arrays are preset, prefixed by a circumflex up arrow, whereas locals are not. Globals are, global arrays are stored on disk or external medium, usually a disk, uh, whereas locals are stored in volatile memory. Local arrays are destroyed when the program that created them disappears. Uh, global arrays remain, they persist. Um, arrays, either local or global, are not pre-dimensioned or declared. Array elements are created either by the set command, the merge command, or the read command. Those are the ways elements are created. The indices of an array are specified as a comma-separated list of numbers, strings, or both, surrounded by parentheses. But that's the way it used to be in Fortran, and PL1 still is. Um, the modern way in, in terms of C and Java, it's bracketed lists. Uh, we, we don't use those. Bracket means something else. Don't use a bracket. It's got to be a parenthesized list. We'll see that in an example in a moment. Uh, if you create arrays are sparse, um, which means that if you create an element of an array, let's say 10, it does not mean 1 through 9 exist. They might, but it doesn't imply that. It means you've got element 10. Uh, the arrays, as I say, they have, uh, you can, it may look like a big, giant, three dimensional or 10 dimensional array. But in actual fact, it may only have a few a few hundred elements in it, if that. Um, it, it's, it's sparse. In that sense, it's going to be used for a lot of different applications. Um, the array indices may be positive or negative numbers, character strings, or a combination of both. You can have just about anything in, as an index that you want. Um, the arrays can have multiple dimensions, and that's usually limited by the maximum line length which is at least 512 characters according to the standard. You may want to check this with different implementation as to what's the maximum number of, dim of dimensions in an array, but um, it's quite high. Um, they can be viewed as either trees or matrices. As a matrix, they're just a multi-dimensional um, array. As trees, uh, the, the successive elements of, an in of, a, of a description are actually a tracing through the tree. We'll see that in a moment, through a tree. Um, let's see, data can be stored at various places in an, in an array um, or a matrix. Now let's go to matrix, um, multi-dimensional array, or not stored is the point. And we'll see that in, in, a, in a little bit. Uh, you can store data in a lot of places that would be, seem unusual in a language like C. Uh, uh, local arrays, I always mentioned, they destroyed on exit. Here's some examples um, of local and global arrays. The local array here, um, it's named A, and it's got elements 1, com one 2, 3. Those are the, uh, the indices. And in C, that would be A, bracket 1, close bracket, bracket 2, close bracket, bracket 3, close bracket. But we don't use brackets. We use parentheses. Uh, so this is a three-dimensional uh, 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 three array, if you want to look at it that way, or three-dimensional matrix. And we're storing at the node... Um, a uh, one comma two comma three, the text value something or text value that is stored at that node in the in the uh, in the array or in the tree. Um, we see a very similar one on the next line, which is a global array. There's you know very little difference on the fact one has a circumflex, therefore the data is stored on disk, and the other one doesn't, which means it's stored in memory. Um, we are not restricted to using numeric values as the indices. We can use strings. And here we see some text strings, and again, we're storing something in. <coughs> uh, we can, of course, use variables. So if I have a variable i that contains the value testing, I can have a sub i and store something in it, 1001. It is being stored at the element um, testing of the array a, likewise for um, global arrays. In other words, the, the values of the indices can be... Um, uh, the values of either constants or variables or expressions, as you would expect. Here's something much more complicated. Um, it's all string indices. Uh, the first index is Iowa. The second one is Blackhawk. The third one is Cedar Falls and um, stores U and I. I used to teach at the University of Northern Iowa, which is located in Cedar Falls, which is in Blackhawk County, which is in Iowa. You can see here is a hierarchy. So Iowa subdivides, let's say, into its counties. And the counties subdivide into its towns, and U and I is an organization in that town. Uh, likewise, you see the same thing represented uh, for the uh, uh, for a um, 
a global array. Here's another one. It's quite similar. Iowa, Blackhawk, Waterloo. Waterloo is another town in Blackhawk County, and John Deere is located there. You can see there's a tree going on here. Uh, we're branching. This down here is uh, this is C notation. Don't do it. <coughs> Brackets do not mean what they do in C or Java. Here's some more examples of um, of elements of array. So if I have an A, you know, the variable A contains the uh, text first fleet, B contains Boston, C contains flag, uh, up arrow ship A comma B comma C Constitution um, is stored at that node. Captain of Constitution is Jones. John Paul Jones was the first captain of the USS Constitution. Um, the home of the captain of the ship is Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Um, so uh, I didn't put New Hampshire, but it's, it is Portsmouth, New Hampshire. So we have uh, embedding here of, um, you, you got to remember, these are elements on the disk that are il indexing other elements on the disk. It looks a little odd, but um, so we could have various ships, various captains. It's... Um, but it's all disk-based is the important thing here. So we could write out ship, ABC, and you get constitution, write out captain of constitution, we get out Jones, and so forth. Now we're going to look at hierarchical organization of the data. It was originally written because um, to, to store hierarchical medical data. Medical data in, is often viewed as a tree, a tree structure. Now this is not a very legible slide, but then again, why should it be? It's highly detailed. <clears throat> in this slide, slide what, I'll tell you what it means. First, we start off with patient number. And under patient number, we subdivide it into different things, like results of a physical examination, results of um, a reference record, and so forth. Um, we have admission states. For each admission state, we might have a list of problems. For each problem, we might have a list of laboratory records, diagnostic records for each, let's say, um, um, we, and we subdivide and subdivide without trying to get make this illegible. But... Um, the point is, it's a tree. Uh, and you can look at the medical tree in a lot of different ways. This is just one. Ultimately, we store data at various nodes in the tree, higher nodes. These are boxes of data. And these are data boxes down at the end. But this was the concept they were dealing with. And that's what they wanted to implement. They wanted a way to implement trees in a language. Um, now, of course, since the trees are implemented using array notation, or matrix notation, of course, they're also matrix, matrices and arrays. You can you know, view me the way. Here is a um, stylized example. I use numbers here because it wasn't enough. For this one you can read, I hope. This is, um, this is a global array tree. Of course, without the circumflex, it would be a tree in memory. Um, but since I got circumflexes, it's... Uh... Now, the name of the array is root. Okay, that's just the name of it. I could have called it Fluffy. Um, it doesn't matter what the name is, except we need to use the same name through the exa entire example. Now, at level one in the array root, we have the, the, have the indices 1, 5, 8, 15, and 32. No others. It's, it, it's, it, at that point, we're just looking at a vector. And, it, and the elements of the vector that exist are elements 1, 5, 8, um, 15, and 32. Uh, element one of the vector has two descendants. This would be the second level. It has 1, 37 and 1, 92. Just picked arbitrary numbers. Uh, 92 has two descendants. 1, 92, 77 and 1, 92, 177. So you see here, this looks like an array reference uh, to a three-dimensional array, and it, it and stored here would probably might be some some data. And that's how you refer to it. But you can see it's also a also a tree. It's also a path description. We start off at root, we go to 1, we go to 92, and we go down to 177. Each of these indices tells us which way to go in the tree. Uh, likewise, down here, if we started off with uh, 32, we could go to um, element 5 and then to element 3. Uh, so that's, and if we saw that represented in code, this is what it would look like down here. We would establish, for example, this element here, 1, 37, by saying up arrow root 1, 37 equals 1, which means I am not only creating this path or this element, I am also storing something at it. I'm storing the value 1 at it. Now, what if it doesn't exist? Well, it creates it. This path is created, and the node is created, and the data is stored. Um, 
What's stored at this node? Nothing. Not yet, anyway. Maybe something, but not right now. Uh, I guess I didn't anywhere down there. So this node is an intermediate node, but it stores no data. <coughs> the only data we've got right now is in here. Then we go to 192.77. So uh, 192.77, and I store the value 2. That creates the node and the intermediate nodes as necessary. Now this intermediate node already exists, hypothetically. Um, and uh, we create this node, but don't store anything at it. The only thing we store it is down here. The next line here is 192 comma 177 equals 3. So the path that goes down to this one, we store the value 3. Now these intermediate nodes, as it were, already exist. Uh, and we can go down the entire list here. So at uh, node number 5, we actually store a value here. Remember at this node number 1, we stored nothing. There's nothing stored here. There's nothing stored here either. They're just wave stations. They've got no values. Um, root at 5, we actually do store something. Uh, we could have had descendants of 5. By storing something, that does not mean I don't, I'm don't. i done. It means I can still have it. Uh, we, um, Which, unfortunately, I, I gave you the impression here, the ones that I stored at that level, I don't go any deeper. But um, I could have said um, up arrow root 32 equals 77. And that would have been fine. I still could have had the descendants. So you can store items at any level in the tree. Now that's kind of different than a standard uh, multi-dimensional matrix. Quite a bit different, as a matter of fact. So that's what it looks like. Here's the example that's used on the cover of my book. It's taken from uh, it's taken from the National Library of Medicine um, um, mesh terminology, where they subdivide everything into into increasingly deeper in categorization. So cardiovascular consists of blood vessels. The blood vessels consist of arteries arterioles, et cetera, et cetera, down the list here. Um, the arteries consist of the aorta, um, the aorta abdominal, aorta thoracic, uh, sinus valsalva. And I've left things out there, and this is not an attempt to, to do anatomy, but the idea is that we have all of these codes and hierarchies, and as much as I could get on the screen. Now you can see um, MESH is what they call it, medical subject headings. Um, and uh, this is from an old version of MeSH, so I'm required to tell you don't use this for clinical diagnosis. It's out of date, uh, any, unless you really want to, but no, you're not supposed to. Anyway, uh, as it turns out, A07 is cardiovascular system in their coding scheme. A07231 is blood, blood vessels. These are their codes. Uh, 231.114 is arteries and so forth and so on, and that's how you represent it. This is the mumps code to create uh, this tree. Uh, this is the hierarchy. This is the hierarchy of the mesh subject headings, and it's very convenient. And we can search the tree. We can navigate the tree. We can find descendants and and uh, siblings and so forth. Um, again, uh, mentions here string indices. It prevent it, mumps permits both n numbers. That would be like patient uh, one two three four, receiving an hematocrit test on that date with a value of thirty eight. You might interpret that as meaning that. And we store nothing at the node. This creates the node, but stores nothing at it. The empty string is nothing. A lot of times in mumps, we find out that, uh, or we program it such that all the data is in the indices. There is actually no stored data. So here we have a bunch of hematocrit tests for this particular patient done at um, on different dates. Now, real hematocrit would probably be timestamps and so forth, but for the sake of argument here, we have... Um, we have four different hematocrit tests that were done on the patient with these different values. We can extract the data just from the indices. We don't have to store the data. And, for some, and sometimes it's, it's more efficient to do it this way uh, than to actually store the value. Instead of just putting the parenthesis right here at the end at this close quote and saying equals 38, um, for searching purposes, it can sometimes be easier to do it this way. Um, in mumps, we have some functions which allow us to access arrays, both local, local and global. These are called the data function and the order function. Uh, the data function tells us if a node exists, if it has data, and if it has descendants, which is very important if we're going to navigate the, the, uh, the arrays. We need to know if, um, if it's got descendants, obviously, and we might want to know if there's, got, if there's any data there because it may not have data. The order function, on the other hand, um, tells us what the next ascending or descending index is at this level of the tree. 
So if I found a given level of the tree, order will tell me who the next sibling is. And we can go forward or backwards, the previous sibling or the next sibling. And they come back to you alphabetically. Here's some global array examples um, that uh, show, um, oh, they could be local arrays too. Um, doesn't matter, but I did them as global. Uh, this, by the way, first of all, we should explain uh, what this does here. Uh, the for loop, this is the loop in mumps. Uh, the, the loop variable is i. It starts at 0. It will increment by 1 up to uh, and including 100. Okay? So that, that's them. So I will, I'm going to do everything below here. The do says we're going to do them. It, it introduces a block. This is blocks, how they do block structuring in mumps. The do says the following lines are, are subject to this command. Now, the following lines must have at least a one dot. That one dot tells it we're in a block. And you'll notice this has a do also. Well, the following line has two dots indicating it belongs to this one. And this do here has, uh, means we have the next line is three dots. We'll explain block structuring a little later. But um, as soon as we, if the, the next line here would presumably have no dots in front of it. That's how it would know that everything's over. Um, if I went back to two dots, it would assume it belonged to the um, uh, to this do here. Follow what I'm saying? But anyway, uh, just these are in, these are embedded um, embedded for loops. So what I do from one uh, from zero to a hundred um, from um, from zero to a hundred from zero to a hundred, I'm creating a matrix uh, uh, i comma j comma k. So it's going to have values from uh, zero up to a hundred. So it's a very large matrix. It's a hundred times a hundred times a hundred. 101, 101, 101 elements actually, so it's really quite large, and they're all they're all initialized to zero. This would be a traditional matrix in Fortran or some language like that, uh, where it's a three-dimensional matrix and every element exists. Every element exists. Well, here's another way of looking at it. It's the same code as before, except I'm storing something at each level. So at the vector level for matrix. Um, one, two, zero, one, two, three, four, five, up to uh, up to a hundred. I'm storing the values of i. At the two-dimensional level, I'm also storing values, and at the three-dimensional level, I'm storing values. So I've stored far more values into it um, than up above here. And then finally, down here is the sparse matrix interpretation. Um, by ten, it increments by ten. So there's a lot of elements that are a lot of values of i, j, and k that are not used. Um, but I did basically the same thing as up there. But so this, this is a sparse matrix. It will have significantly less than um, the, the original version of this. It's sparse, they're empty.